Welcome to the Frontier Show. I'm Joe Whalen, your host, and I'm very happy to have on the show this week the legendary guitarist and rock and roller Davey O'List. Davey, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. Big fan, Davey, and I love the new record. Um, I saw you on Facebook, and I was really interested in what you were doing. And here's a new album called Second Thoughts. I have the record, and it fairly well blew me away from the opening bell. What a terrific record. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mm. Davey, how long, start to finish, did the album take to put together? In around 2006, I had uh, songs ready to master, um, but it took some while to get the mastering complete because uh, I had a baby son, and that put me out for a few months. Well, congratulations on that as well. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 around 18, when he was about, so it took about uh, quite a long time to get back into it. When he was about 18 months, I was ready to, to start uh, mastering seriously. And I got him to to record his uh, giggling on the on one of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he, at 18 months, he could be a recording star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... The album is just, you know, I, I love prog music. Um, I grew up in the 70s. I was obviously very aware of your work with Keith Emerson and the Nice and just what a contribution you made there. But at the time, I really didn't know just what a pedigree you really had because doing a, uh, a re, you know, researching your career is, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of bragging rights with all the bands you played or spawned. And from the very first uh, introduction on the record, the opening track, Second Thoughts, I said, wow, this is really a return to everything that I remembered. And yet it has a completely modern spin on it. Was this album influenced by your playing with the nice, Davey? Well, yeah, I, I had, to, had been teaching. Um, I've been teaching film editing in colleges. And the head of the department found out who I was. And he said, well, you shouldn't be teaching. You should be playing your guitar and making albums. And he kept on at me. Uh, eventually, I I decided I was going to do that. And I went back to my roots, uh, the thoughts of Amin Stavdak, which was the the big success I had when I was very young. And I decided to do something like um, a, a, a sequel to that. So Second Thoughts came up. Mm -hmm. as the lead track that would be something in, something that would be um, in, in line with the Thoughts of Menos Stavjack and a sort of thank you to all the all the fans that had bought Thoughts of Menos Stavjack and then his, his second thoughts and of course it had a modern modern feel to it as well um, because the digital technology of course made things much easier for me Mm. Um, that was a lot more, a lot more possible. I think it surpasses that record. I was blown away. I mean, I couldn't believe. You know, I do a lot of shows with a lot of rock and rollers, and I hope you don't mind me calling you a rock and roller, Davey. I know you're a complete no. musician. That's a, that's an American film. I don't mind it. I don't know what it means. But you're a Royal College of Music graduate, so yeah. you know you're more than a rock and roller. Um. Yeah. I was. I was trying to. Um, bring something new to rock and roll uh, while well, I was at the Royal College of Music and used that experience there where I was taught composition and played in orchestras uh, eventually to bring that into into rock and roll with uh, jazz and pop and special effects music, TV music, everything um, combined um, to make it really different. Um, because I needed to come up with something that nobody else was doing, mm. and that that uh, that is what that is what I came up with, and it worked out quite well. Yeah, it's like a big paint box here when you play guitar. Yeah, so you could say it was a paint box. I, I, I was trained um, as a fine artist. Uh, I went back to education um, in the 90s and took a degree in fine arts, and then I did a master's. And I combined that with film, so I was I was thinking about uh, colours and techniques and styles like uh, cubism or 
expressionism, styles like this that could be could be used in, in music. And um, I was doing a modern interpretation. At the same time, I, I was re-studying re um, sonata form, the, the classical symphony form. Uh, I wasn't going to copy it, but I was using ideas such as a theme is not exactly repeated, but is developed and then poss possibly develops again. And the whole, the whole piece changes from second to second. And this is what I wanted to do in the, in the album so that people on repeated, on, on repeated plays could hear something different each time. So, you know, you, you could play the album over and over and over again and still hear new things. Mm. We are here with Davey Olist. Davey, the legendary guitar player. He's out with a new album called Second Thoughts. How, how, did, how do you work from thumbnail, to talk uh, to use an artist term? Well, um, it's quite, quite, quite a few years back, I, I had actually thought of this song called Second Thoughts. Um, and it, at the time, reggae was very popular. And I made a reggae recording at the Beatles studios here in London. And EMI were interested in it. But we didn't actually go to contract. And then I re we did the, the number and I took all the reggae out, kept the tune basically, and so I brought it to a, to in, into a, into a more modern, funky maybe um, type of thing, and then that was the that was the way I was going to change it. And uh, I was studying classical composers, and they influenced me some, on some of the melodies that that went on after that. And mm -hmm. That's how it, that's how it, that's how it's sort of got, got, got further and further. Um, and I'm stu stu by while studying classical music, um, I'm 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 on, on the guitar on the on the guitar solo. That is that is my sort of classical uh, composition, the the notation. Mm. I don't copy it from any from anybody, but it is um, it is it is based on how a classical composer was. Uh, would form mm -hmm. a melody. Wow. And you are a painter as well. Yeah. Do you, do you paint regularly, Davy? Yeah, I, I like to. I, I teach painting. Yeah, I think painting is very, very useful, um, but playing music, because you, you, you can think, you know, being a painter, you can think in colors and contrast, mm. and it helps. So, you, know, you know, in contrast, you can think about a contrast between a, a, an organ part and a guitar part. Mm. Uh, as as you would when you were putting paint onto canvas. Mm -hmm. You say you teach painting. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, well, I was at college. I was I, I was a media tutor, and I I, I was mainly teaching sixteen year olds, um, film editing, filmmaking, putting music track on a soundtrack onto the film, and. Sometimes I was teaching special needs painting, uh, special needs students, mm -hmm. uh, painting and storyboarding, um, color theory, which is a very interesting subject, mm. uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Davey, I'm telling you, I'm not surprised because when I heard this record, I, I just knew it came from a real artist. Uh, it challenges it challenges the listener in ways that, you know, the, the great, Prague albums of the 70s uh, did. I feel huh. like it's quite a shame that it kind of fell out of favor, but it, I have noticed in the past decade, especially among the young people, because I'm a teacher as well, I see this music coming back in a big way. And I have a lot of my kids, you know, my students listening to the show, and I'm happy to let them know, um, you know, that you guys are the founding fathers of a great generation that spawned such amazing music and that you're right. It, I know music changed right around 1980, but here in 2015, it's becoming a very healthy marketplace again. I think. I agree. There, there is a, there is a, a an, an audience from from before, from maybe my age group or or after, and there are younger people uh, coming into it. When I played in Rome a few years ago, um, there were very a, a lot of uh, young young guys there, very interested in the music. Well, I have to say something just that you might find interesting, and I didn't even think of bringing it to the show today, Davey, but 
Again, working with young people here in America, I have to say that the most famous classic rock band over here, especially, you know, the students I'm working with, and all around Long Island, the most famous classic rock band, where most of them have been forgotten or the, the, young, the young kids don't know them, but the most famous classic rock band was Pink Floyd, and you actually have... <laughs> I mean, yeah. you were in Pink Floyd. Yeah, I was for a while, yeah. Um, I was uh, sort of dapping, um, but um, I was taking the music in a different, slightly different direction because I'm a more instrumental player than Sid Barrett. And I was doing slightly different things, but I was using the, the echoes that he used and uh, kept kept within the framework of, uh, of the songs. Mm. But the nice were doing so well at the time, and I, I couldn't really drag myself away, although I sort of wanted to, but was a bit young really to make those sort of decisions and they kept coming to see me play after that i think most people now would would jump on the fact that they'd come to see you and would go up and say what well, you know what's going on uh, <laughs> yeah i mean as i said uh even led zeppelin and bands like yes the kids don't know who they are but they're huge pink floyd fans so yeah. i'm going I'm to be telling them all about the new album david yeah, I really like Floyd's. Uh, I like their expansiveness. I like the way they do things. And I know I could have done quite well with them if I'd, it has materialised. And I'm, I, I would really like Pink Floyd fans to to enjoy my album and the music that's going to come out on the next album and, and so on, because I have an album deal. So um, Pink Floyd fans are something that I'd like to, to entertain. Um, I don't want to call out my band uh, the new Pink Floyd for obvious reasons, but um, I feel like that about it. It's, mm. it's it, it, that there is something that has uh, remained with me from from those times I played with them and mm. all the music they they put out since, mm. and um, I feel part of it. Yeah, I, obviously a trailblazer, Davy, and I understand. Uh, is it true you just did an album launch there in London? Sorry. Did you just do a concert? Yeah, we did. Um, it wasn't actually meant to be the album Lords, but it turned into one. It was our, my band's uh, first live appearance together. And you know, you, you normally have to do two or three of those before you know you find iron out all the difficulties, uh, perhaps in the mixing, uh, the live mixing, which is very important. Um, getting the vocals above everything and making sure that the engineer you've got is doing the right thing. But um, it turned into, out to be a, a launch because the timing is sort of fell in with the timing. But the record label are going to do another one in September. Um, I think well, I'm having, a, having a, a new guitar player with me as well, a second guitarist, vocalist, who can um, follow me along. So that gives me more freedom to play with the audience. Mm. And 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 uh, concentrate on my my singing and uh, things like that. Well, Davy, it's been such a great honor having you on my show, and uh, we could probably talk all afternoon. But I'm sure what we need to do is probably when you do the next album, uh, come back on the show because uh, I have so many more questions for you. But I want to make I want to leave uh, lots of room for the album to be featured this hour on the Frontier Show. But I can't really. I mean, I'm very very happy you came on. It's a big thrill for me. Okay, that's very nice. Thank uh, you, Joe.